So the folks at Blender Foundation have just released Blender 4.1. This version of Blender comes with a couple of interesting updates and it promises to continue with the legacy of Blender 4.0. And today we're going to take a look at all the cool, impressive and new features that are now available. At the same time, we'll talk about updates and do a simple walkthrough of some of these features. And for those who would like to take a look at this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here, where you can check out all of the cool things that the folks at Blender Foundation has to offer. And with that said, let's dive directly into Blender 4.1 and take a look at all of the cool features features and updates that are now available. And with Blender 4.1 open up right here, you'll notice that we have a brand new splash screen. A huge shout out to Link's design for making this possible, as the splash screen looks super cool. And if we simply dive directly into Blender 4.1, the UI looks pretty simple and very similar to what you had with 4.0. But then, you start noticing a couple of interesting changes once you drag out a new panel and right click and you'll see that within the area section, we now have icons that actually tells you if you need to join, swap, switch to horizontal split or vertical split. And if you're working with colors, if you simply go over to the color section, you would also notice that we now have a better feedback and a very wonderful indication of what colors would look like when you're working with them. There's also a feedback right here. Once you click and drag, and this currently gives you an update that you're currently working on the value slider as opposed to what we have with previous versions of Blender. And if you like exploring files and probably you like to see the thumbnails of the files that you're working with, if you simply go over to the file section right now and go to where you have the open recent, you'll be able to tell what files you're working on, the day they were made, where they're stored, the version of Blender that was used, and also the file size. This will save you so much time instead of traveling back and forth between opening multiple files and exploring this one after the other, which can be very tiresome. And since speaking about the file menu, there's also this new update that is right here. So at this point, you can clear your recent file list. I bet a lot of people would not want this button to be clicked at most times, but just in case you think you have a long list of things that you want to get rid of, you can now clear this and this will remove all of the recent file from the file list. And if you work with cameras, it is also worth mentioning that there are some very interesting updates that they now have for cameras. Although this feature was available in Blender some time ago within an alpha test, but this was totally taken out. So if you're on a camera view, instead of creating shortcuts, at this point, you can simply lock your camera from your viewport. And this has always existed in most tools and it's quite interesting to see that Blender 4.1 is coming with it. And just like we saw with the beta, if you do have a squashed out version of Blender side by side with another version of Blender or another window, if you go over to the panels, the panels no longer stretches all the way out like it will do normally. So you now have this panel stretching all the way down instead of stretching all the way out horizontally. And if you work with Blender 4.0 and 4.1, you'll definitely notice that within the background, the active clip and also the camera, these input placeholders now show a hint about the expected values of the input. Within the file browser, tooltips can now show the Blender version, the image dimension and also the details of a file that you're working with. So whether you're working with a video file or you're working with a simple image, this can now be visible. The eyedropper can now pick colors outside of Blender windows on Mac and when we did try this within the beta, this wasn't the case. Now if you simply go over to the outliner, you'd also notice that the outliner now has a new icon. And within the outliner, the outliner context menu now contains the show hierarchy and expand slash collapse all. Modifiers can now be applied from the outliner. And if you simply double click on the outliner collection, you would now also be able to select all the children. Camera fonts has been added to support the new translation of the Cambodian language. And if you work with Linux, the input method editors are now supported for Wayland. And as we speak about the user interface, let's talk about some very interesting things that are now here. So if you're working with Blender 4.1, at this point, drag and drop is now supported. Now it has taken us a long time to get this, but it's pretty impressive to see that this is now here. So if you do have an OBJ file, you can now click from your browser or from your window or from your explorer, drag and drop. Super cool. So you can now import objects by simply dragging and dropping them into your viewport. So we do have this bird right here. We can hide that. And these are also supported for USD files. So we can bring in this USD file, click on OK, and we have that right here as well. The same thing can be said for Alembic files as well. So we can bring in Alembic file, play with the scale if we want, make changes to the options and import that too. So with this Alembic file, I do think we have a few animation playing back. So let's see what we have. If we press the playback button, super nice. So we do have that. And this is also something I think that is pretty brilliant. So just in case you've been thinking about when will this come over to Blender, you now have it. 
and the same thing can be said for STL and of course some other file formats which also includes SVG, Colada and PLY. This is very interesting to say the least. Currently there is nothing that has to do with FBX being imported by drag and drop but we did notice that with 4.2 this seems to be a potential update that is coming as we've already made a shot about that in the past. And while we speak about file types, the USD now has a new set of capabilities which includes exporting amateurs as shape keys. There's also the scene graph instancing import support, the point instancing import support, and also a couple more updates right here. Alembic also has a couple of interesting updates. STL now has a new exporter. So the new exporter is now written in C++ and it is making the importing of STL 3 to 10 times faster than the typical Python one. And we just simply demoed how you can drag and drop an STL file, which is this file that we just dragged in and drop. And for sure, you can tell that they simply import really, really quick. We do have updates for FBX, the Stanford PLY, OBJ, 3DS file, and GLTF. And while we speak about the things that you can now do within your Blender viewport, let us talk about this cool update that is now available for a lot of people. So if you do have any object selected and you right click that object, we no longer have the auto smooth, rather there is now the shade smooth by angle. This is a geometry node based shading tool which now replaces the auto smooth. So if we go ahead and let's drag out Susan the monkey and we simply subdivide this by two, we can now right click and shade smooth by angle. Now with this, we can play with the angle that we would like to use to shade this. We can also keep the sharp edges, turn this on or turn this off. And of course, if you like to see this, if you simply drag out a new panel, click on this drop down, go over to where we have our asset browser, switch these over to the essentials, you would notice that this now comes in as a geometry node asset. And speaking about interesting updates that is now available in Blender, if you simply have an object selected and you tap I on the keyboard, all you've done is add a keyframe. So contrary to what we had in previous versions of Blender, where if you tap I on the keyboard, this brings out the insert keyframe menu in version 4.1, if you hit I on the keyboard, all you're doing is to add a keyframe. So we can move this over to another given frame and I can move this over to a point. We can tap I on the keyboard and that adds a keyframe to that. And we can also do this, tap I on the keyboard and we have that. And now for the keyframe menu, how you get that up is to tap K on the keyboard and you would notice that right here. So this has now been updated. So just in case you work with these shortcut keys, it is time to reorient and keep this in mind if you plan to work with 4.1. And for animation, there's a couple of nice and interesting new updates that are now here, as animation and rigging now shapes with the bone collection. Bone collections are now hierarchical, so the collections can be shown as a tree instead of a flat list, and you can simply tile these things however you want. So depending on what you want, you can select certain joints, and you can make them parents or grandparents. And the beautiful thing about this is this simply supports a simple drag and drop, as you can use these to rearrange your bones how you like them to be. Some other interesting update deals with visibility. So if you do have joints that are all tied up together in a collection, probably they have been nested. If you hide the parent or the grandparent or the great grandparent, all other sibling joints get hidden. And of course, the same thing can be done with soloing certain joints. So if you like to have any joints being soloed, all you need to do is to click on the star button and this would simply solo that joint. This is going to help a lot of rigging artists and also weight painting artists, especially if you just want to focus on one joint or make certain changes to a particular joint. The bone collection has also made its way to Rigify, so if you also work with Rigify add-on, which is a free add-on that comes with Blender, this is now also part of it. And at the same time, an on solo operator has also been made available, so just in case you do have joints that are being soloed, probably you like to on solo all of them, you can now do that as well. And for the NLA, there's a brand new channel option to action bake. There's also a brand new bake custom property to action bake. And the NLA channels has also been renamed to NLA tracks. And you can see what the comparison sort of looks like from the previous NLA and what we currently have. And for the weight painting, this seems not to have been fixed in a sense, because with what we have here, if we tap one on the keyboard, you can see that we can simply start weight painting with this value. At the same time, if we press 2 on the keyboard, we can switch, but there is no third button. But if you simply go over to the release note, it states that bone selection mode is made explicit when you enter the weight paint mode with an amateur. And this is exactly what we've done. As right in here, we do have this joint, so we do have this interesting joint right here, and we cannot 
simply go ahead and uh, make these changes. So if we go over and switch to the weight painting, this is all we have. One, two, you know, we don't have the third one. The third one is in here. And yeah, I, I do think this is one of those things that might come later in as a patch or probably would make it to 4.2. Keen has a new update, which we've just talked about. And it is pretty interesting to see that for drivers, there's a couple of interesting updates that you can now work with. The graph editor now ships with the scale from neighborhood operator, which is pretty impressive. There's also an add an option to automatically lock keyframe movement to either X or the Y axis. This can be found under the view and auto lock axis. There's an additional option to the right click menu on animated properties, which will allow you view the F curve that animates the object that you're looking at. And for this to work, the object or the node has to be selected as this doesn't work independently unless there is a selection. And for motion path, we've already mentioned this in the previous video. At this point, you can now create motion paths which are tied to an active camera. So this means that the motion path would only appear in screen space when you're looking through a camera and this is a very welcome development. And for those wondering how this is done, by default, if you do have an object, say for example, traveling like this, and you have a camera, in this case, we do have this camera that has been locked to this viewport or simply locked to this. What we can do is have the object selected. And if you go over to the property section, you can scroll all the way down, go to where you have your motion path. And from here, you can click on bake to active camera. So this new feature is something that is currently available and if you click on calculate, it's going to take a look at the whole thing and calculate the motion path for this. So once you jump out of the camera, this is still visible, which is slightly different from what was mentioned on the page. So if we go right in here, you can see the motion path, which is baked to the camera as we do have this one selected. But then I have no idea why this seems to be active on every other part, which isn't the camera at this point. So. For those thinking about how you can bake this camera, of course, this is how you can. But then you would also notice that despite the fact that we have a baked to the camera, we still have the motion path available across the entire scene, unlike what we have here, which says it only appears in screen space when looking through that camera. And for geometry nodes, we do have a couple of interesting nodes that are now here. And the baking node is one of the coolest nodes that has made its way through geometry node. This node just simply allows the saving and loading of intermediate geometries. So instead of evaluating every single node, whenever you perform a node operation down the line when you're creating a node tree, you can simply have a block of node which you already have a result for and you can bake that. At this point, baking no longer loses material and the bake cache is no longer lost after a simple undo. And volumes can now be baked as well. There's also an update to duplicate data in bakes. And with the bake node out of the way, there's also a couple of new nodes that are now here. The split to instance node now allows for splitting a geometry into multiple pieces based on the group ID. There's also the Mosgrave texture node, which was replaced by an extended noise texture node. This has now made a comeback to Blender. There's a menu switch node, a sort element node, index of switch node, the rotate the rotation node, which now replaces the rotate Euler node for a faster and more clearer way of modifier rotation. And at the same time, five nodes have been changed to use the rotation socket introduced in the last release. And this include the distribute points to face, instance to point, rotate instances, transform geometry, object info, and instance rotation. Fun fact, the active camera input node now gives the scene's current camera object. So just in case you're trying to build a geometry node with the camera, this is now super possible. And for performance, there's also a couple of interesting updates for performance, as the extrude mesh is now six times faster for large meshes with many vertex group, and the shortest distance path node can now be at least 60 times faster. And like we mentioned before, the auto smooth has now been replaced with the smooth by angled node. And for those who like to read up about this and see how this calculates the vertex faces and also faces kind of normals when working with it, they might want to simply go over to the geometry node release page alongside the modeling node release page and read this. And speaking about the modeling, right now modeling seems to have a very tiny update. And one of the new feature types of update that is now here deals with the curve. So the new curve type now supports new operators, the draw tool. The draw tool now has the option to create north curves directly. There's also the extrude operator, the duplicate operator, and operators that can control the tilt of a curve. And for rendering, just like we have with geometry node, Mosgrave texture has made a comeback 
And for lighting, the point and spotlight now have a soft fall off option and this makes the light render the same as in Blender 3.6. Of course, this behavior is not physically based but helps to avoid sharp boundaries when the light intersects with other geometries and this option is turned on by default. And of course, if you like to turn this off, you can turn it off and get a much more nicer looking lighting effect if you're considering creating lights that are more physically based than what you get with 3.6. And for Hydra, there's a couple of new supports which includes the Material X, the particle system here and also the exporting of large meshes which has now been parallelized giving it up to 6 times speed depending on the scene you're working on and the hardware you're working with. And a very interesting new update that is now available which I'm very super excited about is Open Image Denoiser now has a GPU acceleration. Now we did mention this in the past and it is pretty interesting to see that this is something that we do have. So just in case you're working on a scene and you would like to get that viewport rendering looking super cool really fast and you don't want to rely on your CPU to do that, the Open Image Denoiser GPU acceleration makes this look super, super quick. So the supported GPU for this now includes the GTX, all the 16 series, the Titan V series and all RTX GPUs. So if you simply have any of these ones, you can go ahead and work with it. More so if you have an Intel GPU with the XC HPG architecture or a newer version, or probably you're working on the Mac with Apple Silicon and you have a version of Mac OS 13 and above, which is actually something that we currently have, you would also notice a significant update in terms of the noising as the GPU helps to reduce memory usage and cost and provides a much faster denoising compared to what we have when using or relying on the CPU. And there's a couple of benchmarks here to show and if you do own an AMD GPU, the rendering support has now been added for RDNA 3 generation APUs. And for Linux, Linux CPU rendering performance has now been improved to be 5% across different benchmarks. Another interesting place where we have some cool updates deals with the Compositor. So within the Compositor, there is a new set of interesting things which you can now do. They've added support for a couple of things which includes the vector blur, the defocus, the crypto mat and also screen keying. There's also the new split node which was added and this simply replaces the split viewer which has exactly the same functionality. There's a new size input to the Kuwahara node which was added to allow variable sizing. There's also a new size property which has been added to the pixelate node as well. More so, if you're thinking about working with precision options or you like to play with a new filter type, there is also a new filter type that has been added to this. And for those who are thinking about reading up on this and probably you want to check out some of the cool things that have been added to the compositor, these ones are right here. Currently, Eevee has little to no update except for the renaming and we're having our fingers crossed because we begin to see some new updates and some interesting features come over to Blender 4.2 in terms of EV Next. So hopefully we'll be getting some more things for EV Next when this gets released. The Python API now has a couple of interesting updates and that also can be said for the sculpting. Although for the sculpting, we're not getting as much update like we think we'll be getting, but I kind of believe that with 4.2, we might also be getting some more updates in that regard. And speaking about sculpting, there's a cool new update that I think we're almost leaving out and that has to do with shape keys. So at this point, you can now lock shape keys. So just in case you are making a shape key for multiple objects or for any object whatsoever, you can lock that shape key so you don't tamper with it when you're making adjustment. So in case you are trying to make some blend shapes, modify some blend shapes, if they are blend shapes you don't want to tamper over time, you can now lock those and focus on the ones you want to work on at a given time. Some other thing which I believe a lot of you guys may also want to see is if you're working with a video sequence editor. And for the video sequence editor, performance has also been improved as the timeline interface now repaints about 3 to 4 times faster. And for effect, the glow is about 6 to 10 times faster, the wipe is also about 6 to 20 times faster, gamma cross is now 4 times faster, gaussian blur is 1.5 times faster, and the solid color is about 2 times faster. The Luma Weaver Room display calculation is about 8 to 15 times faster. And for those who are thinking about working with scopes, you can now see where there is a new facelift and visual look improvement to the scopes as they more closely resemble industry looking tools. And for add-ons, there's a couple of improvements to the GLTF 2.0 and also Rigify. And for exporter, there are some new features and enhancements that I believe you can take full advantage of. And for those who are looking for more add-ons, there's going to be multiple links in the description that will take you to brand new add-ons that are currently available. And we're making a list to make some announcement of these add-ons later down the week. So, this is it. For those who are thinking about checking this one out, then you can simply go over to the link in the description and see all of this for yourself. A huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for making this possible and releasing this interesting update of Blender 4.1. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. 
And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.